Guitar Summit. This is number one guitar center from Hamburg, and we are here with Mr. Thomas Weilbier, the owner and, um, well, the vintage expert in Germany, the guy who's been selling vintage guitars when they were the latest, newest shit, and Mr. Thomas Bluk as well. And um, Thomas has uh, done some videos for our new video channel, but let's start from the very beginning. Thomas, uh, you have been selling guitars for 43 years now. That's right. Professional and selling guitars yes. since 1977. Yeah. Wow. So you have sold Stratocasters and stuff uh, when they were pretty new or when they were second hand, the old stuff? Which Mainly second hand. When we started the shop in 1977, what we took over from Willy Becker, uh, we would not get supplied from the new companies because we bought always second hand instruments from England, from America, from many, Sam Ash, and and and. So we, all, we only had second hand stuff. At this time, I paid for my own 1963 Candy Apparatus Stratocaster, where Peter Valle and Matthias has something like this $700. It was a used guitar at this time. Today, it's it's a rare vintage guitar. Yeah. 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 At this time, it was a used Fender Stratocaster yeah. that I could afford for $700. <laughs> and now it's a totally different time. But nobody thought at this time that you have a piece of history or a piece of art and a special sound in your hand. It was a used guitar. And you know how many guitars we destroyed because people came in, Alex Conti, Thomas Kretschmer, today is Carola and so on, and came in and said, I like this guitar, I like the sound, but the neck, I like the neck from the Lake Placid Blue. We said, okay, four screws, we changed the neck. And so, you know, it was only a 700 USA dollar or let's say a 1500 German marks guitar at this time. It doesn't matter if you change the pickups or something like this. Nowadays, it's totally, totally different. And even like Thomas, as you know, you had been, I think, 17, you said, yeah. when you bought your four. <laughs> so so, so my, my connection with this Thomas is when I was 17, I wanted to buy a real vintage guitar. And the, the reason for that was the tone, because I was playing um, a lousy Fender Stratocaster back in the mid 80s. And then um, this was the lousiest uh, Fender quality ever. And then they, they had uh, just brought out the, the Squire GV series, Japan Vintage, which was kind of a replica of the vintage guitars. And I found this better than the standard Stratocasters in those days. And then there was a guitar, Luthier, which comes from my hometown, Saarbrücken, um, Michael Frank Braun, who then worked for you. And <clears throat> I asked Michael, Michael, who, uh, what can I do to get a better sounding vintage style Stratocaster? Because I have seen Gary Moore on television and he played some old guitars. And I was 16, 17, and Michael explained to me, well, maybe then you need a real deal vintage guitar. Then he moved to Hamburg, he worked for you, and one day he gave me a phone call and said, I got a guitar for you. And this was me riding to Hamburg on a night train to save the money, whatever, buying my first vintage guitar. I was so lucky that I never, you know, was carving out more wood to put in hamburgers or anything, because at that time I already knew a single coil uh, pickup would make me happy because my heroes did it that way. So I was lucky to have the right heroes, not to destroy my guitar too much. Um, but the fa fascination for me in the, in, the, in the vintage guitars was mainly the tone. Um, I, I, for some reason, I found that the standard guitars that were available, they were good, some were better, but I was a tone hunter. I wanted that Gary Moore burning feel and I couldn't get it with the standard uh, straight of the wall guitars. So that was the fascination. And I'm so happy that I have bought the guitar at your place for a, a very good price. It was one of the best investments back then. Right. To, uh, today, you know, the prices have a, another zero at the end. Uh, but you still have the guitar, so you make it huge, 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 huge. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. you one times want to sell it or give it. No, no, I wouldn't sell it be because for me, the guitar is not um, 
an object for investment. For me, the guitar was always a player and it was a side effect that it was a vintage guitar. I was not hip in the uh, late 80s, 90s, where everybody was after Steve Vai and having fancy yellow and you know very very bright color guitars. So you didn't modify any old Japan strats with Floyds back then? No, no, no Floyds, but I was experimenting with different pickups. I was, exp but only single coils. I was uh, experimenting with different wirings with, uh, you know, back then there was this, this, this strat which had like a super switch where you could have so many different combinations and stuff. So I was always curious to find out about tones, but I came back to the original design. And so something was right on some vintage in instruments. And I believe this is, um, you know, sometimes the original idea from Leo Fender has such a strong character that a musician can adapt to the character and is still fascinated after decades, after 40 years, after 50, 60 years, it's still something that I, I would not change. I mean, I respect that there are different new guitar models, but um, hey, if you play a Taylor Les Paul, it, it, it's still very usable today. Yeah. You know, when, when Leo Fender, as not a guitar player, uh, what he could do best is listen to the musicians and get this feeling into his body or brain and making yeah. a guitar out of it. Yeah. See the Fender Stratocaster or the Telecaster, nowadays they are always the best selling guitars. Standard, Still. standard, yeah. Tele, and so on. So he made something in the 50s, yeah, it's, it's an icon. Yeah. I don't know how to explain, but it's it's because uh, he didn't play this guitar, so he listened to the people, the problems, what the need of the people, yeah. and he made a guitar. And and he he was you know he was straightforward. When when you look at the design, can, can you give me the no no the other one the um, this, the this, custom shop one? Yeah. This is a custom shop yeah. one, and of course I mean this is a new guitar made uh, to look old and to have the original specs, everything. But uh, the way he designed, you know, the Solibot guitar was so straightforward thinking and so radical in the way because everything had, you know, uh, curved uh, tops like a violin style or acoustic mm. guitar. And he did just have a plank and put a neck on it and uh, screwed it on. But, you know, the character was there and it's still there. I, I would like to, to demonstrate the difference between a new guitar and a real old guitar because here in the shop at number one they do have the real deal guitars so this is um yeah this is the, the original thing with the original ashtray right nobody needs that i give you an ashtray <laughs> so hey listen but this li is a 52 blackguard yeah reissue and this is the original 52 i got this guitar from g e smith i think end of 80s beginning of 90s I, so long we have it in our vault yeah Okay, I show you what I, maybe, maybe you can hear, maybe not, but um, I, I think uh, it, it's great to show a little bit the, the, the tonality of the, the new one versus an old one. Same thing with old wood. Can I have the, the uh, custom shop back? Yes. So what I can hear is on the bridge pickup. Very nice, absolutely nice. It has everything. It has the twang, it has, 
but somehow the wood is not at the same place, I would call that. And this is the last bit of the tone that I'm fascinated about old guitars. Maybe this guitar will sound similar in 40, 50 years, we don't know. But this, as a player, I would like to grab something that is spot on now, because in 50 years I'll be dead. <laughs> But it's, we often had this, especially in this room with famous bands, famous musicians, we have to talk, how does it come? The feeling of the people of the guitar player who plays the guitar is very important because the vintage guitar, you feel different in your body. Yeah. This is the thing, you're sitting on a couch and you play and something is happened here. Physical, it's a physical experience. And you play different, you play maybe better, you have a better feeling. But with, we have a lot of famous producer, also international here, and they say to me also, if you put a vintage guitar on a record, recording, the voice speaks more. It's yeah, it's it. You have a carpet underneath yeah. that didn't destroy the frequencies of the voice of special people and so on. So, let's say the audience on stage. They, they, they don't know. They don't know the, the difference between yeah. it, even if the musician feels better and he's yeah. smiling when he plays yeah. the guitar. But uh, it's, there are so many different things. Recording is a very positive uh, thing for the producer because also the frequencies in, in different lengths of the strings, if you play an A or yeah. an C or something like this, the old six strings, are the carpet is sprayed. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a fundamental thing, what is yeah. going on. I, I used my 61 Stratocasters not only on all my gigs, but also on every studio gig. And I had a collection of different guitars, which, which is a Strat and Les Paul, and maybe a, a second Strat, maybe some Maple Strat or whatever. But my vintage guitars made it to every re recording session. Mm -hmm. And in the end, the choice was the real old guitars more than anything else. And therefore, they are used on every recording that I played on, my 61 and my mid-60s ES335. For, for some reason, they, have, they, they, they make the job easier in this kind of uh, settings. Absolutely, yeah, but there is also not, not a price issue in it. We, we, we talk about here of a, of a high-value guitar, but Absolutely. even like a vintage guitar, from 1962, like an ES125 for 1500 or 1800 euro, or a refinished guitar, has the vibe. Has a different vibe, absolutely, yeah. But, but when do you think did it start, the, the whole vintage thing? I mean, when, would, when did people start to realize that the old instruments are more important, or more like, like better sounding instruments? I had a an experience in the 80s. We had been the Chavel distributor. We brought over Don Dockin, the Chavel, over to us, and we had a lot of musicians coming international. And uh, then a time came, I remember we had this elastic guitar strap yes. where the company Roland came and they had a keyboard mm -hmm. hanging on our elastic guitar strap. And Dieter Bohlen, you know, all these things, everybody said the guitar is dead. And uh, we had been very afraid and say, oh, should we open a keyboard department? And so we say, no, <laughs> we go another way. And then we hired people like Alex Conti worked for us, he came on on Friday, Thomas Kretschmer came on and so on. And we, we stepped more and more into the guitar. And then we found out that we say the new guitars are OK, they are horses, they bring you to the next step. But the old guitar gives you something special. And everybody was in the shop. They came in for a coffee. At this time, it was wild, more like for a glass of champagne or <laughs> wine. But they came in and wanted only to play the vintage guitars. And Alexis Corner, he had a girl. Now I can say he had a girlfriend in Hamburg. <laughs> and he came every second day into the shop and played a Black Everly Brothers guitar for two hours, sitting in a corner and played this guitar, because he, he felt so wonderful. He said, this is the best guitar I ever played. And that, then we realized and say, that there is some magic into this guitar. What is it? And also, you know, like, 
Kloppmann, a lot yeah. of other people, they're thinking about how to find out what makes it special and so on. Till now, they don't find out the hundred what is the perfect no, no. issue for it. But at this time, I would say the end of the 80s, the people realized and thought about it, oh yeah, 59 Les Paul has something special. Or yeah. 57 Strat let's, or let's something. Let's hear a 59. Let, yeah, let's hear, what, what, let's start with the real deal or with a custom shop, whatever. Let's start with the, the real deal. Do you have this, any? Yeah, this is 1960. 60. That's so, okay. And then we start with the bridge speaker. This is a real deal, Les Paul, with PAF pickups. You feel that your hair is going up. <laughs> I know. Okay, now let's try. It. This is also a 60 reissue, a brand new one. Yeah. It's not it's bad. No. No. It's very good, good guitar. guitar. If you yeah. wouldn't have the other one, yeah. well. <laughs> but, you know, when you compare the whole thing here, it's like the guitar has such a mm, nice overtones, you know, it's like kissing, you know, every note is so sparkly, but still you have the dynamics. You dig in and then it barks. Hey, it's, it's, she makes something different to you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the, the player communu communicates with the guitar. So it has a feedback. So what I do and what the guitar gives back to me is different. And um, I could even see it from here. Your, your playing dynamics changed yeah. because uh, the, the, the new instrument didn't react to the, to the lower dynamics yeah. as you could have done with the other one. Yeah, yeah. and it, 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 it's, to me, there's a certain magic. And we also have to note that not every vintage instrument is as good as this one. So I, I, I found a lot of vintage instruments um, that are super, um, in a way, let's put it that way, the best sounding guitars on this planet, to my personal taste, are vintage instruments. Mm. I've never found guitars that, for me, with a vintage tone in my head, sound better than old guitars, period. So, there are some great sounding modern guitars, but they, they have something else. In the in the vintage guitar world, there are also some guitars that are not so good sounding. So there are exceptions. But outstanding guitars, the top-notch guitars, of if the top 10 guitars in the world sounds are vintage guitars, in my opinion. Yeah, but there's also one thing. We had this often that we get guitars that are not so good. We call it, they are dead. Yeah. But to tell you the truth, every vintage guitar, even if it's dead, you can bring her alive. But you must to, to get you have to, to know make the right things what you are doing. Mm -hmm. That's very important. The old the old piece of wood, you can kiss her away. It's absolutely possible. But you have to know how you do this. Okay. That's why I would say yeah. to everybody, if you find something defective, broken neck, try to get this old piece of wood. You yeah. can make something out of it. Yeah, I mean you also have people employed here that take care of guitars that know how to do a proper setup job. And with all the experience, you know what to do. 
to, to, get, to, to get the instruments. You know, and also if you have this piece of wood, Klopman can make the right pickups for it. Yeah, he or, can. Repa or repair it, you know, with all the respect to the original. But pickup. the wood is the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, I mean, you know, as we all know, there is a little secret in every component. I mean, even the bridge, even the metal, uh, even, uh, you know, it's the wood, it's, it, it's everything. And in the pickups, the same thing, even the screws are something. So like Andreas Glockmann, who is <coughs> who's a guy that makes pickups himself from scratch, but he started repairing p uh, pickups, so he has all the respect for the original components and then tries to keep it as original as possible by just rewinding or fixing it, the pickup. And if it's not possible at all, or if somebody put in some shitty pickups, he can try to, to get some decent pickups. Absolutely, yeah. uh, but the it. main thing is the old wood. Yeah. You can work with this and make something special out of it. We know that vintage guitars have become so expensive during the last 10, 15 years even more expensive than before the crisis in the US. Um, how would you say, well, is, is it an investment for a working musician still? Or is it only an investment for rich people? Or The first thing is, I would say, it's an investment for himself of his playing, because he feels different. Maybe he can ride a hit with a guitar, <laughs> sitting on a couch and play. We also have, when we have customers, when people come in and say, I'm looking for an investment, I would say you should buy a Rolex. Yeah, sure. It's guaranteed an investment. <laughs> but with guitars, I always say, the first thing is you have to f feel good with this guitar. You have to play it. And if you have this guitar at home, you, you must see your wife on this side and the guitar on this side. And you have to run to, it's your decision. But the guitar has to be in this position. Right. So, and if he has this vibe and he wants, he accepts this, if he's selling the guitar and getting more out of it, he must be the happiest man on earth. Right. But buying a vintage guitar only to making money out of it, it's a totally wrong decision. I would yeah, say. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. So, if people look for vintage guitars, you know, they go online or see some, some stuff over at, uh, you know, at some place and then everybody exciting, oh, I see something old. Mm -hmm. So what are the criteria of a vintage guitar that makes it worth money versus a vintage guitar that is just uh, lying there? So, so where, where, where is it getting more valuable um, aspects? No, you have to check the guitar. Every guitar, vintage guitar, you have to make like an appraisal. You have to have a look at all the specification and see if it's original. That's what we do. We check every screw, every pickguard, and see if the truss rod is working and measure the pickups. And then all these details, it takes an hour or two hours, depends on which guitar is it. And uh, then you have a profile. And then you can have a look. For example, we have, let's say we stay with a 52 telly. 100% 52 blackguard cost 40,000 USA dollar and we're always thinking in dollar and up. And now something is defective. The pickups are not original. You deduct maybe 20% or 15%. So you go down in price and say, okay, this guitar is 75% 75, 75 original and it's a price of 29,000 euro. This is very important to do. Otherwise, uh, there are a lot of fakes on the market, you know, like Drew Berlin, Guitar Center Hollywood, from the Burst Brothers, he says, they only made 1,500 of the Les Pauls, but 2,500 are on the market. How does it <laughs> Some things must be wrong. <laughs> so yeah. you have to be very careful what you are doing. And I always say, when people call from Vienna or Munich and so on, go to a music store, get an appraiser, and if not, come in a train and we make an appointment and we do this for you. And also the CITES situation is now important, yeah. very important cause of the Brazilian Rosewood fingerboard, not yeah. with the telly, but, but here. with the Les Paul. Uh, as the Rosewood fingerboards, till definitely till 1965, you need a CITES. So we cannot import guitars from America anymore till 1965 cause of the Brazilian Rosewood situation. It's totally impossible. 
you can smuggle it in, but you cannot sell it, and you are <laughs> you yeah. are in a prison, maybe something. Yeah. But uh, you have to take care and see what's going on. And uh, it's also we have a lot of people that calling. Oh, I got a nice offer in eBay. It's a Telecaster for nineteen thousand, and then my oh, I don't know what to say. Yeah. No one to, nowadays would sell a 52 Telecaster for 19,000. There must be something wrong. Yeah. So there is not a bargain or a deal. That's yeah. impossible today. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that, that's the, the, the trick. People are always get kind of tempted by something and uh, then buy, you know, I wouldn't say you shouldn't buy a guitar that is not 100% original if you like the guitar, but you have to find the right price point right. for it. That's you know, I mean, if, you know, that, that's, that's the, the, uh, the point where, you know, if you're looking for a good player and uh, if you have a killer sounding guitar with maybe a few deductions because of overspray, because yeah, of blah, blah, blah. finish is 50% off. You can get it for half the price. Yeah. Right? And hey, that's probably a guitar that's a good deal for a player that doesn't want to put all his money in a guitar like that. And then, of course, it's not as critical like having the real deal, perfect finish on a, on a gig. You know, I wouldn't like to have a guitar at this price range on stage. You know, this is, the, I mean, this is too precious yeah. uh, for you me. You cannot go and drink a beer. And go no, I mean, <laughs> you know, in the old days when the guitars were not that expensive, Nobody cared, but like today, uh, with this kind of value, you have to look after. So a player guitar can also be a solution, but it needs to have the right price tag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, th and there's a lot of strange things going on with stories that people always try to tell you. Yeah, and there's always some attic findings. I heard some stories from Thomas back in the days, uh, people coming into the shop with uh, old guitars, and, and it happens every week. Yeah. So, so uh, and I remember the days uh, in Denmark Street. What was the shop there? Uh, there was a shop, Andy's Guitar. Yeah, it's also Andy's Guitar. Yeah. Also. And I, I, I mean, me having seen a few old guitars, I could see a lot of fakes there, or half fakes, or whatever. So it's, uh, you know, especially when you're not experienced, the first thing is get some advice from people that do Up know. Years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's like, I know how it is emotionally. I want that vintage guitar. Oh, now is the chance. Tomorrow it will be gone. Bullshit. I mean, maybe, uh, uh, but get an advice. There are enough people like Thomas um, that have seen so many guitars. They, just, they spend one hour and you know everything about it. And if you're talking big money, it's this kind of investment is always worth doing it. Yeah. But also you find guitars, you know, and say, oh, that's owned by the Rolling Stones, Keith Richard, he has a signature on the pickguard. When the Stones are on tour here, we're selling five, six or seven pickguards. They're standing in front of the hotel doing this and this, and they put this on a telecaster. Yeah. You know, also you have to take care if you have famous guitars from famous people, there must be a letter of authentic behind it yeah. and an appraisal and so on. Otherwise, the price is, is nonsense. Yeah, it's, it's not justified and it's, a, it's just a cool story to attract people into right. the mousetrap. Right. <laughs> yeah. But Thomas, you as a player, you've just played videos or recorded videos for the shop with about 20 very, very high-priced old instruments. What would you say? What was your favorite instrument during the last two and a half days here in the shop in this room for the YouTube videos? I think it was uh, one of those Les Pauls, the 1960, and there was a 59 too. Uh -huh. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm the one with the Bixby, the bridge pickup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm known to be the Strat guy, um, and I got my Strat, and I love my Strat. Um, and you have beautiful Strats in here, but lately I'm so much into the Les Paul thing myself, yeah. even. Um, and uh, I can tell that these guitars here really touched me. I mean, it, it just now you, you could hear yeah, it, you yeah, know, I mean, it's, it's something I, I just react to it and it's a fact. I can fake it. I cannot fake that. You know, I mean, I'm some people uh, tell hey, he's a killer demonstrator. He can make everything sound good. Yes. But then I have to work to make it sound good. This, this guitar, for instance, that talks to me, you know, I just react to the guitar and that's the beauty. And I have the phrase of some guitars, they have 
for me, music built in. It's like I just pick up the guitar and it is, inspires me. And that's, I don't know why it is, where it comes from, but this is fascinating. Absolutely, yeah. That's right. So stay tuned and check out that video with this Les Paul. Yeah. There will be about 20 videos during the next month. Yeah. And have a look for the video with the Les Paul with the Bixby. And yeah. you will probably see his ghost bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on Christmas. Maybe on Christmas. Maybe, maybe later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you and stay healthy and safe. Yeah.